We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Being a farmer these days can really be hard work. And sometimes there are so many problems you don't know which way to go. So if you're feeling like that and you want expert advice, welcome to Shamba Shepherd. Nestling in the shadows of Gong Hills outside Nairobi are a number of small shambas. Many of the farmers here are in need of some good farming advice. And that's where we come in. Meet George, Lucy, Boniface, Samuel, Lydia and Mary, and little niece Wamboi. They've lived on the Shamba for 16 years and would love some expert advice on all their problems. So now, George, what problems do you go through in your farm? The main problem uh, is on maize storage. Uh, I would wish to increase my yield. What about your cattle? Due to high cost of uh, inputs, I'm not able to feed them properly. So they must be very skinny. <laughs> well, uh, somehow, I wouldn't say very, but uh, somehow. Well, what else do you grow? Well, I also grow potatoes. It's also a problem because uh, when uh, there are no lanes and I have no uh, methods of uh, irrigating, mm -hmm. so I go without the potatoes. Okay. Yeah. And whose chickens are those? Can hear chickens. Those mm -hmm. are my chickens. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, I take them and I keep them to, uh, uh, to Mama's uh, kitchen. <laughs> and Lucy, what he's saying is true. He takes his chicken in your kitchen. What about you? I wish to have an electricity because we are depending on palafing and our time is very limited. Like yesterday, we were solving problems in mathematics and our alarm go off and we go to bed. We didn't need to uh, finish our studies. How about Mary? Okay, for me, my problem is in the kitchen. When I wash my utensils, I don't have that place to dry them after washing. Wow. Okay, good. I think we've listened to all those problems and we'll see what we can do about them. We have experts who deal with the problems you have, especially in the farm. So, so I think we start right now, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Let's go do it. <laughs> Wow, that's quite a list. There is maize problems, cow problems, chicken meat looking at, there's a lack of light, a kitchen used as a hen house, and even problems with their potatoes. Better roll up our sleeves and get started. We don't pretend to know everything about farming, but we certainly do know experts who do. And they're only across from here to help George with all his problems. And with our team, are they ready to give a helping hand? We are determined to leave this shamba in a better state than we found it in. The heart of a shamba lies in the soil. Poor soil, poor crops. Simple. But there are always ways to improve the situation as our soil and fertilizer expert Philip Karuri from IFDC well knows. Philip has brought with him the results of a soil test carried out earlier on George's soil. How many bags of maize do you get from your farm? Oh, well, from one acre? Uh, ten bags per acre. Ten bags? Yeah. By using the fertilizer, mm -hmm. such as the one we have left you with, you can get about double that amount, twenty bags and more. Okay. The resource of your soils we are not very encouraging. It's indicating that you have low phosphorus, yeah. potassium, uh -huh. which is also very high, uh -huh. which is not bad, yeah. calcium, mm -hmm. which is also optimum, that is good. Mm -hmm. A lot of other things like magnesium, sodium are also very good. Okay. Okay. What about uh, manure? Do, don't manure have these uh, uh, elements that mm -hmm. are lacking in the soil? Manure is very important for your soils. But we don't know how much of the nutrients are in that manure. So you cannot depend on that manure if you want to return to, to, to give the soil the nutrients it needs. Okay. Yeah. What should I do? Uh, to, what collect we, this? to collect this, we recommend some fertilizers. As you can see from the bag, 
we have come with here is to show you mm -hmm. is written 1846. Zero. Mm -hmm. What that means, it has 18% of nitrogen, 46% of phosphate, and zero potassium. <coughs> okay, George, I'll leave you with that bag of fertilizer okay. and wish you well. So, if you think your soil needs extra boost, it's well worth having it tested. Testing costs only a few shillings in the government laboratories and a bit more in private laboratories. Testing will enable you to apply the right type of fertilizer and the right amount. Soil testing should be done at least every five years. So, George usually harvests 10 bags of maize per acre. By using the right fertilizer, he can double his yield to 20 bags per acre. One bag of fertilizer costs the same as one bag of maize. He used four bags of fertilizer so he can harvest 16 bags of maize. George was telling us he was particularly anxious about his maize crop. So having tested his soil and advised on fertilizer, we invited Dr. Jane Ininda, crop improvement officer from Agra, to show him some new development in maize growing. George, no. what seed do you use to plant on your farm? I use 6LS, uh, uh, that is 628, 6, 614, 626, those varieties. Well, that is good. But as you know, the weather has changed drastically in the last several years mm -hmm. and there has been a lot of frequent droughts coming. Mm -hmm. And you can see that we have this maize variety. Okay. It is good because it will mature in a shorter time so that even if your rains fail, like because of drought or because of any other weather change, you will be assured of a crop. Okay, great. I saw a lot of yellow leaves on the maize plants. Okay. That is called maize trick disease. Maize trick. It will drastically reduce your yield. Okay. But when you plant this variety, first it is early. Secondly, it will resist the disease. So you get a better crop and a higher yield. Maize is not always planted alone. Okay. So I also brought beans. <laughs> <laughs> These beans are very good also because beans make what we call nitrogen, which is like fertilizer, okay. which fertilizes the maize as it grows. Uh -huh. So you plant your maize, you plant your beans in between, uh -huh. and both crops will grow up very healthy. Okay. What is the difference between this seed and uh, what he was using before? The one that he is using takes six to seven months to mature. Like uh, Lucy needs food, she cannot get the food early. She will have to wait for seven months, but now she can get the food in five months. It's almost 99% germination. That's why when you buy the seed which is certified, you know it will germinate. So you just need to plant one. Do you have mobile phones, Lucy and George? Yes, I do. We want to send a message to Kefis, asking them which variety you want to plant on your farm. Send a message to 5354. Type maize, put hash, and your name of the division is Deya. So put Deya. And say said. And the message you get is the advice on the seed you need to use on your farm. George and Lucy, you have an expert at the end of your mobile phone. Yeah. Phone it and pop. Let's see what Jane recommends. The first thing that you need to do when you are planting your seed is to make sure that the land is well prepared. How do you do that? You have to dig it, remove all the weeds, and lever it. Mark out the first row for maize. Using a piece of string or a stick that is centimeters long, mark the distance between each maize plant. Add the recommended amount of fertilizer to each hole and then add a little soil, placing only one seed per hole. Then mark out subsequent rows 90 centimeters apart. Between the maize rows, plant two rows of beans 30 centimeters apart. Beans should be planted 10 centimeters apart in the furrow. So next time you okay. get more yield, more then your kids yes. grow more healthy and uh -huh. beautiful. Okay. More beautiful than more beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. A text to Kefis might only cost 10 shillings. But what are the other costs when planting in this way? You will need to buy bean and maize seeds, but do look out for the Kefis stamp of good quality. Then there's the fertilizers. Buy a variety recommended for the condition of your soil. 
but this course should increase your yield by at least half again. Not a bad investment for a good outcome. George and Lucy were lucky to have a tip-top crop expert advising them there. But what about their children's problems? All of them were anxious about the lack of light at night when they needed to study or work. I need to investigate. Okay, boys, you told me your biggest problem is electricity, right? So now show me where you do your homework. Yeah. Whose house is this? Why? Okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So where do you study? Here, I do my study. Yeah, I can see you have a problem. Ah, this one we have to fix. <laughs> Is your house as dark as your brother's? Yes, a bit, because we don't have a light. Is and this where you study? Yeah, this is the place where I study. Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> huh? Because we don't have light. Ah. Hey, Mama. Mm. <laughs> Came here to check what you're doing? It's so, dark in here, right? I don't want to go to the house. I so you'd like some light? Okay, let's see what we can do. Thank you. Okay, sir, sir. They suddenly need some help here. So we called in Paul Juguna, brand manager of D-Light, to see what he could recommend in way of solar power. Um, solar power is free. Mm -hmm. um, it's clean. It's right. brighter than kerosene. Mm -hmm. So I'd strongly recommend solar power for this uh, household because you need to keep on buying kerosene each time. Right. The fumes from the kerosene are not good for people around the light. Right. For reading, yeah. the, the light is not bright enough. And it's not good, especially for students, because mm -hmm. their eyes will deteriorate in the long term and they tire very quickly. Right. Yeah. We call this a task light. Right. Because the light is very focused mm -hmm. on a small reading area. Right. And very simple to use because it's just one button on, mm -hmm. you know, and one button off. On a full charge, this will give you up to four hours. How long does it take to charge, to fully charge? We, we recommend a full day's charge. It has an overcharge protection, so it, it will never get damaged by being right. overcharged. Right. And where possible, face the panel towards the sun. Okay. For Mama, mm -hmm. we have a different kind of lantern. Um, first has a handle that right. you can move around, so you can mm -hmm. hang it yeah. um, from the top. Mm -hmm. You can place it on a table. Um, it's very multi-purpose. You can read with it. Oh, so you can as well read with this? Yes, yeah? you can also read with mm -hmm. it. And it gives you a more rounded 360 degrees kind of light. So depending on what you're using it for, you could press the button once for a dim light. Right. Press it twice for a bright light. Okay. And press again to switch it off. Now, oh, great. On the bright setting, mm -hmm. um, the, the battery discharges a bit faster. So that yeah. will give you four hours, similar mm -hmm. to this. And on the dim setting, it lasts for eight hours. Wow, eight hours? Eight That's hours. That's fantastic. I'd like two for the boys. One for Mama to hang in the kitchen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one, a big as this one, for the girls in the living room. Absolutely. We have you covered and we'll give you all the lights you need. It seems solar power is best when it comes to convenience and health. And it's less expensive than you might think. Take a look at the D-Light website for more information. And don't forget there'll be no nasty bills to pay once you have bought the light. The solar power comes free. Solar power? Something of huge benefit for all the family, not just the kids. As we can see with the solar power lamps, the sun has many positive qualities for the farmer. And one in particular is to help with the drying of the maize cobs before harvesting. But George is not getting the best of his crop. So we invited Amos Karioki, a crop agronomist from Syngenta, to the Shamba to see if he can help. When do you harvest your maize? Uh, we harvest uh, twice a year. Uh -huh. Uh, first day crop during the month of February, towards the end of uh, February, and uh, mini session in uh, the month of uh, September. September. Yeah. Okay. You are supposed to harvest your maize when it's dry, because mm -hmm. it ensures that uh, you don't have a lot of work uh, drying your maize. Yeah. The other thing that you are supposed to check is uh, uh, the cara. The cara. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the cara bad? One, mm -hmm. The cara is not bad. The, that one you can use it to feed your animals okay. or for your own consumption. Uh -huh. But for the market, they okay. want a pure white cob. Thanks. This one is uh, deceased, so okay. you need to grade it up, release, remove this, and please don't give them to the cows. And how do you know that the maize is dried properly? You can uh, do this. So if it makes some noise... Yeah, sharp noise means... Yeah, sharp it, noise? Yeah. It means they are, they are dry? They are dry. Wow. Yeah. Which uh, method should I use to dry? Because uh, I use canes and... Uh, 
bit okay, limits. Okay, George, yeah, that's what we have been using, but unfortunately with that, you are going to break a lot of them. But we have a uh, hard sheller There's in the, in the, in the agrofet. You can use that hard sheller okay. to shell your maize. And, and it's quicker. It's, it's quicker. It's quicker. Uh -huh. Yeah, and actually not get the broken uh, grains. Oh, so what, what is all this about dusting? Dusting, uh, we have what we call storage pests. You need to use an insecticide for against the storage pests. Like we have weevils. The weevils yeah. The common storage pest is a dudu or weevil which feeds on dried maize. It can substantially reduce your crop by feeding on your stock. Let us go, George, and I show you how to do the dusting of your maize. Good. Feed for storage. However good the harvest is, it will be worth much less without dusting for dudus. You have to put on your protective equipment, uh, masks and uh, gloves. Put your night kg bag on a uh, canvas. After that, dust it with the gold dust. After that, uh, you mix it with a spade. After you have thoroughly mixed uh, the dust with the maize, then you put it back to the, to the sack. You need to uh, cover it. You sew it, then you go and store it. I'm glad George is getting his maize problem sorted. But we still have a lot more shipping up to do. I think it's time to sit down and take stock. And I'll tell you what, that is better than kills. Shine on me. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, will Amos approve of the maize storage makeover? And will George's cows benefit from a new type of fuel? It's a new day on George and Lucy's Shamba. There's still more expert advice to give. We have tested George's soil and advice on the type and amount of fertilizers to apply. And a top crop expert has shown how to plant maize and beans for higher yields. We have also purchased some solar lamps for the children to study by and to light Lucy's kitchen. And instructions on how to dust maize for doodos will help George's production to keep for a very long time so he can sell it when prices are good. But having harvested the maize, we need to look at the next of his problems, that of storing it. Okay, Bona George, uh, yeah. this is where you store your maize. We have a lot of spillage. Yeah. Yeah, these maize should not be there because they are going to attract rodents from outside. Okay. The other thing, yeah, you're not supposed to put them on the floor. Uh -huh. yeah, why, why is that? Uh, because they are going to absorb moisture. Uh, you should sew them together, mm -hmm. and then those sacks are too big, and actually the way they have been put upright is not the right way. Mm -hmm. They should be uh, put uh, side by side, uh, mm -hmm. down horizontally. Stacks, uh, horizontally. Okay. Uh, then you dust. Okay. So that's the way you are supposed to, to do mm -hmm. uh, on, on your stores. Mm -hmm. George, yep. we are going to do something about your store. First, we removed everything from the store and swept all the loose grain away. Then the bags of maize were sewn up so that bags could be stored on the side. Mwangi and his team set about making some pallets so the bags could be stored off the ground. The floor and the pallets were dusted for doodos before finally bringing in the bags and dusting them too. While all this rough, tough storage action is going on to improve George's maize harvest, we are calling in another specialist to advise him on the best way to improve the productivity of his cows. Meet John Mwangi, an animal production specialist from Coopers. He is just the man to improve the production of George's herd. How do you feed it? Let the glass. Let the glass, huh? When I don't have, like, yeah. I use uh, maize stovers. Uh -huh. They are going to do urea treatment of your maize stovers. Feeding it on animals? Yeah. Because you know what, huh? uh -huh. urea uh -huh. will retain the protein that were lost, the okay. nitrogen that were lost uh -huh. when the main stovers were in the field, okay. and also to make the main stovers soften, okay. such that you be in a position uh -huh. that can be eaten well by the cattle. Uh -huh. So you just need to go and chop it, uh -huh. and then you treat it and treat it so well. Then you shall put it for seven days okay. for fermentation, okay. because it need to ferment. Uh -huh. Then, after seven days, mm -hmm. you come and feed it. Okay. Then you can make some several bags for several periods. Uh -huh. You can feed that feed for the next four months. You can okay. imagine. Okay. What is the quantity that I should uh, uh, give? 
to the animal. Let us say like you give around eight, eight kilograms of feed. You give around six kilograms of hot usual feed and introduce with the two kilograms of urea treated beast stovers. Okay. Also, you are going to see the response of the cows as they are eating. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can also now put at us three quarter mm -hmm. maize stovers mm -hmm. and also quarter of what you have been feeding on. Mm -hmm. How much does your cow produce? 10 liters. 10 liters of milk. Yeah. You can do better. Okay. With the treated milk stovers, mm -hmm. you will be in a position to increase your milk production okay. to 15 up to 20 liters. John goes on to show George the best way of mixing urea with maize stovers to get a better feed for his cows. We have 10 kilograms of the chopped maize stovers. Okay. Then we prepare a solution mm -hmm. of 10 liters of water mm -hmm. and 400 grams of urea. Then we make that solution. Then we sprinkle that solution in that maize stover, that is 10 kg. Then we shall put them in a silage bag. Then we shall press it because we need something fermentation. Yeah, we do we compress kapsa kapsa because of something we call anaerobic respiration. Yeah? Okay. That is fermentation without any oxygen. Yeah? Uh -huh. When you treat a urea, mm -hmm. your mist of us with urea, you mark the date when you have done it. So what does it take to make this special fodder? Maize stover should come from the shamba, but remember to chop it into small pieces. Although you rare and the plastic bag will cost you money, the return on increased milk output will make it well worth it. This size bag will hold 200 kilograms of treated stover, which can feed one cow for 15 to 20 days. It will also improve the body condition of the cows while significantly increasing the milk yield, particularly in the dry weather. But remember to give other supplementation since treated stover mainly provides energy. Good for the cow? And good for the farmer. John then explains to George the importance of planting shrubs to provide an excellent source of supplementary fodder for his livestock. The right fodder for cattle is very important if you want high yields and healthy animals. Our livestock expert, John, has already taught George how to enrich his maize stovers with urea. Let's see what he's going to say about fodder shrubs. You know, caredra mm -hmm. is used as a fodder, is a protein supplement for your cows. Eh? Secondary, mm -hmm. you can use it to build a hedge. Caredra mm -hmm. is a nitrogen fixing plant. That okay. means eh, mm -hmm. that caredra makes fertilizers for the plants that you are growing. Okay. So you can interclop it with maize. Okay. with other plants. Mm -hmm. Also, caliandra mm -hmm. can be used to make to have, to have firewood in your house. Eh? Dry twigs, uh -huh. like these ones. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. These are very good for your, for mm -hmm. your house. Mm -hmm. At least the mama can be in a position to make firewood and at least be coming. As you're plucking the, the fresh ones, mm -hmm. the dry ones, you put them aside, at least okay. it goes and makes a fire with them. Mm -hmm. And it cooks for me. And it cooks for you. <laughs> yeah, you, have, you, have, you have advised George to intercrop it. Yeah. Now, is it, will it be harmful to other crops? Oh, no, 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 no. For your other plants that you're having, it will provide. So even, even instead of being harmful, it is being beneficial to the plants. There are some essentials that you should always consider when you're planting coriander. Mm -hmm. One, you should make a hole that is the size of at least one feet, one feet, one feet deep. Eh? Yes. At least to make a good surface area for root establishment. Okay. Then when you're planting, you should remove the top soil, eh? mm -hmm. such that the roots are on the, on the, on the second layer of the soil. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then you take up your manure, at least three handful of manure. Yeah, one more. Then you put some topsoil, then you mix. Ah. After you have mixed, then you pick up your plant, mm -hmm. remove the, the outer polyling paper, mm -hmm. and you put the root part of the plant mm -hmm. on, the, on the, the mixture of the manure and the, and the topsoil. Mm -hmm. At least water it for the next five days. Eh? Okay. At least for it to have good establishment of the root, okay. of the root mm -hmm. and then it will be good for survival. And, and how long does it take to grow or mature? Within the first three months or four months, eh, you can start plucking out. In four months, you'll be smiling, George. Ah, you'll be a smiling yeah. farmer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now it's time to see if all the hard work on the maize storage area has paid off. Amos comes to check it out. Okay, Mr. George, yeah. I've seen you have improved your soil. Yep. Yeah, you have sown your sacks. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're not open for dust. Yeah. 
uh, you have they are off from the the wall. Yeah. Yeah, I can see oh, you can put. Kept them well? Yeah, you are supposed to keep them horizontally okay. to create more space uh, for your store. Okay. Also, I can see you have uh, put parrots. They are mm -hmm. off on the floor, uh -huh. and also you have swept whatever spirit that we had. Yeah, uh, they dusted. Yeah, they are dusted. Yeah. Uh, As you can see, yeah. this one will help you to keep uh, your maize for a long period mm -hmm. uh, for food security for your family. Yeah. And also you can sell them at a later date yeah. where you're go going to fetch a, a better price. Uh -huh. The place yeah. looks clean. Yeah, looks clean and actually more space uh -huh. uh, to keep more maize. Yeah. Yeah. Although he has a bumper harvest. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I do thank you. Thank you very much for, yeah. your, for yeah. your advice. Yeah, this is a job well done. Uh -huh. I'll keep it okay. up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We cleaned, dusted, and disinfected the walls and floor, put pallets on the ground, sewn up the sacks, stacked them horizontally and away from the wall, and dusted each layer thoroughly. And the extra income George could realize for storing his maize correctly and not losing a third of his crop as he did before, for George, this could result in 30 extra bags of maize. Money well earned. Naomi, time is running out for us on this chamber. And we haven't even looked at George and Lucy's chicken or potato crop problems. You know, I think we'll have to pay them another visit. You're right. We must return. After all, you have to make sure each and every shamba we visit is well and truly shaped up. But before we go this time around, there's just one last thing we have to do. That is, show them the benefits of solar power. The kids are coming home from school. So let's see if the family really like their lamps. Hello, how are you doing? Do you like the lamp? Eh, mona mona, tawo ni dira kyo no deli. Ate ni dira iku na ate ni koko haba deli ya dira haba tageli ya. Okay, enjoy. No ega. Okay, bye. Thank you. And the kids at last can study at night. I want to see them all become professors. And even George is finding the lamp handy in the dark. Good work all round. Thanks to Shamba Shape Up. Wow, oh, I've really learned so much on this Shamba. And the only way I can remember it all is by getting in touch with Shamba Shape Up. By SMSing them and asking for a leaflet that covers all what you've been doing. This is what you get. SMS the word below with your name and address to 5606 and we will send you the leaflet.